Welcome to this YSL video tutorial. This is part 3 of a 4 part series teaching you how to create custom fields in Microsoft Project. In this fairly short session what you'll learn is how to add a graphical indicator to a custom field. The idea being that instead of displaying the basic data you can show a nice traffic light style symbol instead. We'll show you how to choose which graphical indicator to use how to set up which conditions the graphical indicators display under and then how you can also display data labels to give a user a little bit more information. So let's get started. So we're back in the Santa's workshop file for this example but instead of the boring old resource sheet we've now come into the exciting Gantt chart view. The reason for that is the example we're going to create is based on the finish dates of our tasks. So to show you how graphical indicators work, we're going to first of all calculate the difference in days between the finish date of a task and Christmas Day 2011. Once we've got that calculation working, we'll translate the numbers we've got into a set of graphical indicators. So for tasks that finish well before Christmas Day, we'll have a nice green safe traffic light. Tasks finishing a bit later will have an amber traffic light. Then tasks finishing quite close to Christmas will have a, have a red traffic light, indicating they're quite critical. To start with, I need to create the calculation itself. So to do that, head to the Project tab and choose Custom Fields. It's going to be a task field this time because the field will insert it, be inserted into a task table. I need to consider what num what data type to use. This time the data type is going to be number. So I want to calculate the number of days between the end date of a task and Christmas Day. Choose a field to customize. I'm going to go with number one. Click the rename button and I'm going to call this one something like countdown. And then choose OK. Then I can click on my formula button and start creating my calculation. I'm going to use one of the date and time functions to work out the difference between my dates. So I click the function button, choose date and time. There's quite a lot of date time functions. I'd like to be able to show you all of them, but we haven't quite got time. So I'm going to point you to the one we're going to use. It's called date diff. If I select the date diff function, project types in the structure of that function for me. Now one thing I'm going to do here is actually get rid of the final two arguments, first week of year and first day of week are two arguments that I don't need. So I'm going to get rid of those and the extra comma after date 2 and then press the backspace key. That leaves me with three arguments to fill in. Interval, date 1 and date 2. Interval specifies what unit of time I'm interested in. I could be asking the function show me the difference in dates be between date 1 and date 2 in weeks or months. Here I know that it's absolutely I want to find days difference. To specify days, I type in the letter D inside a set of double quotes. The next thing to do then is specify date 1. If I double click date 1, I can replace this with the first date that I'm interested in. Usually this is the earlier of the two dates you're using. So I'm going to find in my field list the date category and the field called finish, representing the finish date of each task. That should be the earlier of the two dates. Date 2, finally, is a specific fixed date, 25th of December 2011. To make sure that I, the project considers this thing as a date, you need to enclose the date inside a set of hash marks. Similar to the way we enclosed our piece of text here in a set of double quotes, dates are enclosed in hash marks in project. So I can type in a hash mark, 25 forward slash 12 forward slash 2011, and then close the hash marks. Once I've done that, I can click OK. I'll get the standard warning that any values are going to be replaced. That's fine, I can just click OK again. Click OK once more, and finally insert that field into the table. So let's insert a column. Find the number one field, countdown, and click on it to insert it. Now one thing you might notice from this, where I can see subtasks in my list, it seems to be calculating an appropriate value. So I can see for, let's look, for tasks finishing on the 24th of December, that's happening, that's ending one day before Christmas Day, 23rd of December, two days before Christmas Day. But it's not showing me the same information for my summary tasks. That's because of the default way that calculations work. 
with rolled up task. A summary task is an example of a rolled up task. So I'm going to make a quick modification to my custom field. Head back to the custom fields button. Make sure I've selected countdown and then look in this section here, calculation for task and group summary rows. What I'd like my summary tasks to do is use the same formula that I've used for the subtasks. So to do that, I'm going to click the use formula option and then click OK. Now I can see that all of my tasks have a number in them representing the difference in days between the finish date of the task and Christmas Day. The next step then is to translate the numbers into the appropriate graphical indicators. So to do that we need to customize the countdown field one more time. I've selected a cell in this field then I can click on the custom fields button, make sure I've got the countdown field selected and then look for this button at the bottom, graphical indicators. When I click this button I get another dialog box which allows me to set up a list of criteria and then choose which images I'd like to display when those criteria are met. It's quite a long list actually, isn't it? you're not limited to just the, the three rows that I can see. So, to begin with, I'd like to say if I finish more than 100 days before Christmas, I'd like to show a green traffic light. So if I click the drop down arrow here, I get a list of comparisons. Here I'm going to choose greater than or equal to actually. I can then type in the value I'm interested in, 100, and then click into the image box click on the drop down arrow and select something from this lovely long list of images. If I go all the way down to the bottom of the list, that's where my favourite ones are actually, there's a green smiley face, I'm going to select a green smiley face if I finish 100 days or more before Christmas. On the next row then I can build up the next criteria. This time I'm going to choose is greater than or equal to 10. Then in the image box choose a yellow sort of straight faced yellow symbol. It's worthwhile mentioning that the conditions you set up are applied in the order you've created them. So for example if I'm looking at a, a, a task that finishes 150 days before Christmas that will match this criteria first so it will get a green smiley face. Although 150 days is greater than or equal to 10 it won't apply the yellow face because this one has already been applied. So one final step then to apply the final criteria, if I finish less than 10 days before Christmas then I'd like the red face to make sure that it shows those tasks are critical. Before I click OK, one last thing to consider is how summary rows are going to be displayed. So for the summary tasks, by default they won't use the same criteria that I've set up here. So to make sure that's the case, I'm going to click on the Summary Rows option and then simply check this box. Choose Yes to make sure that that happens. And I can see it's greyed out, I can't change this. But the Summary Rows are going to use the same symbols and criteria as my non-Summary Rows. When I finally choose OK and choose OK one more time, I'll see my numbers get replaced with my traffic light symbols. There's a green one for a task finishing 347 days before Christmas, amber one for task finishing 47 days before Christmas, and then red faces for those finishing within 10 days of Christmas Day. You can see if you hover the mouse over a smiley face, it actually shows you the value that underlies that indicator. And that's how to display graphical indicators in conditional formats in Project. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wisel.co.uk.